Hi and welcome to a, a new video. So in this video I just wanted to quickly go through the new beta uh, version of the Asus WRT firmware. So again this is a beta version so it means that it's a test version. So they're just releasing it right now for the public to test it out on their uh, routers and see how it works and then report back any bugs. So again I wouldn't really advise this if you're relying on your, like I do, on your main uh, router that's mine is the GTAX 11000 and uh, that's the main Wi-Fi uh, router that I have for the house um, so all my devices are doing that so I wouldn't really advise unless you really want to um, to upgrade to this uh, test version um, because sometimes it will still have bugs in and things like that so it might not work 100% um, but if you're like me and you've got a second uh, router that you want to test it out on or if you do really want to test it out you can and as we can go into later on you can revert back to the main firmware if you really do have problems so it's not like you're stuck with the test beta version. So what we're looking at here is the Asus WRT386, this is the release candidate 3 public beta. Um, so as we see here you can see that there's five uh, new features they're, they're adding. The majority of these features are uh, sadly only for AX so that's uh, Wi-Fi 6 or AX models um, as you can see here. So the five features are quickly just go for an overview and then we can go into details later. Um, so as you can see the first one is uh, around a new VPN client interface. The second is uh, clients can now be assigned to a specific VPN profile so you can you can specify like your TV or your uh, Android TV box or your Apple TV to a certain VPN. Um, so it's the function like they're saying here is similar to the current VPN uh, fusion that's uh, within the uh, Asus firmware. Also thirdly you've got support for now WireGuard server and clients so again uh, this is the new VPN technology that we'll go on to in a minute. Uh, fourth, uh, so on this beta firmware, is uh, OTA is normally over the air um, and one click reverts. That means that you ca can actually go along and if you do want to test this and you do have uh, problems with it, you can revert back by just clicking a button. So it makes it much easier. And lastly, number five is support for DNS over TLS. Um, so it makes it more secure and also you have the option of two DNS servers. So now if we have a quick look at the user new uh, user interface. So as you can see here, this is the uh, new VPN client interface that's coming up. So we have the tabs under here, so we have the VPN server. We have multiple VPN connection, instant guard like we have already where you download the app. And this is Asus's uh, specific uh, VPN. And then the new one, uh, the WireGuard server that we'll come on to later. So you can see they've cleaned up the actual user interface now to make it much more user friendly. And here you can see about your internet connection and adding profiles as well. So you can see here you can just add multiple profiles up to 16 profiles all in total. And it just gives you a little step by guide here. So it's really actually quite nice to see um, the new user interface. So uh, secondly, we go on to the here. So you can see this is the profile um, that you can assign. So you've got here the open VPN and you can import your uh, Nord VPN um, and things like that profiles. And it, currently this is an open VPN file you can import here, but you can select the VPN type and the drop down, enter your username and password for whichever VPN service you use. And then you can specify the device you want on your network. So here you can click the pencil and you can edit and then you can choose which devices. Once you've filled that all in and selected the devices you want through that specific uh, uh, VPN, you then you can apply uh, all settings. So basically this is really good if you want to say you've got an Android TV, um, uh, so you want then to want Netflix from um, another country or another service in another country and you want to pretend to be there so you can use your VPN and you can make it specific to that just that device um, so it's always good to see uh, making things much easier as well so uh, thirdly uh, we're going on to as you can see here you can see now to the auto firmware but as we were saying before 
um, that one of the features now is if you do choose to upgrade to the uh, this tester beta version um, you can now see here down you've got here revert um, so you've got the GTX 11,000, the Zen Wi-Fi AX and the RTAC68U and you can see that this is using the AI mesh node but when you before you can see you can upload and it's got the current version of the firmware but then you've got the the revert option as well on each of them so you can revert back to the previous version so that's really always good to see um, and you also you've got a button here to tick if you do want to retrieve beta firmware or test versions most of the time you can leave, leave that unticked because you probably want you don't want to be running test versions of the firmware on a um, on a router that you've got as your main one in your house and you rely on it say if you've got your IP cameras and Wi-Fi devices or you've got your kids connecting through it um, you don't want it constantly connecting having issues and things like that but you can see that's quite good to see and make it very easy to revert back if you did want to test it and it was causing you problems um, then you can revert back but by just one click so that's really good to see that they're making things much easier so now moving on to the DNS settings, as we mentioned before in the new features, it now has a DNS over TLS and also uh, it has the option of having two uh, DNS uh, servers that you can actually choose. So, um, so you can see here you've got server one and two, so now you can choose the uh, different options. So you can have like uh, one as the Google and then you can have its uh, secondary um, Google or you can have Cloudflare and uh, then to Google or whichever your preferences of uh, like Cloud9. There's lots of different ones out there. It's best to test them out and see what it is but I think most people are using nowadays Cloudflare, uh, Cloudflare or uh, Google um, so it's not using their original um, ISP um, ones as well. So again going back to DNS over TLS uh, as an option so think as DNS as we mentioned before in previous videos uh, the best way to describe it is DNS is a phone book of the internet uh, DNS translates human readable domain names into machine readable IP addresses so you can think of it as www.google.com um, and then it DNS automatically translates that into the IP of 192.11.3.55 so you don't have to remember the IP addresses you just type in google.com and it will more automatically go there via D, uh, DNS or look it up and, and take you to their website. So the best way of thinking of the normal way DNS works, uh, saw an explanation, is that you can think of uh, normally uh, DNS queries are unencrypted. So they're sent um, open for anyone to see. So that's your uh, internet service providers. You can see what websites, even if you've got HTTPS, that's an encrypted connection that DNS is not so your ISP can still see that you're going to whichever website it is Google Yahoo or if you're going to a torrent site or anything like that they can still see that and use that information for third party they can sell your information or for advertising um, so I think the best way is again is that as it's unencrypted you can think of it as like I saw a quite a good explanation is think of it as like a postcard that's sent through the normal post mail so you're in the UK raw mail or the US mail or wherever country you're in the uh, the mail system and anyone handling that postcard may happen to catch a glimpse of the on the back of the postcard the text that's written on it so it's never wise to mail a postcard that contains your sensitive or private information so what DNS over TLS um, does is actually encrypts it so what it uses is a uh, HTTPS so there's two different standards currently um, that have been developed for encrypting the plain text DNS traffic so this will prevent um, a third parties ISPs and anyone else intercepting that data um, so it's sent security like you when you, you see the padlock on your internet banking or secure website with a padlock on Google, Chrome or Edge or Internet Explorer or Firefox or Opera, whichever browser you're using. Um, so basically that's the same as that. So it's encrypted. So you're, no one can see what websites you're going to and it's all encrypted. Um, so that's always a really good um, option to have. 
and uh, and I think it's coming a standard thing now as well that's been offered through. So you would always have to make sure as well when you're setting this up is that you make sure that your DNS servers that you are choosing um, do support the feature of DNS over TLS um, as an option as well. So it's always good to uh, have that um, making sure and then you can have a look. So um, the DNS over TLS, as we said, is a, a new option. So it's always good to you can select there um, to go through. Uh, so we go on to next. Um, so as we said before on the profile, um, you can see here and everything. So I just wanted to go about some of the other options as well. That's the uh, new WireGuard server, as we can see up here, is the option up here you can choose um, now. So WireGuard is a quite a new um, VPN technology. It's supposed to be utilizing. Um, it's supposed to be much faster, simpler, and leaner. Um, and as they say, it's supposed to be more improvement on IPsec and uh, even OpenVPN. I've been around several years now. And even OpenVPN is um, open source. The code line is uh, several hundred thousand lines of code, I believe. Um, and when you look at WireGuard, I think it's only around four or five thousand lines of code. So it's much easier, more lean and everything else. So they're trying to say that WireGuard now is the um, the better one uh, to be using. And it seems to be adopted by a lot of different, you might have noticed by NordVPN and um, all the other kind of uh, VPN services out there are now advertising using WireGuard or using a version of it. Um, and it's supposed to be connecting much quicker to the servers and give you much more bandwidth as well to make your connection quicker. As you mostly know that when you connect using a VPN, it does slow down your connection. Well, this one's supposed to keep it going much quicker and it still uses a lot of the encryption um, standards, the same as um, OpenVPN. Um, so basically it's very secure and everything else. And I think it has been audited the code and everything. And this is why a lot of companies are now uh, implementing this as a, a new technology. I personally have installed, you can get the iOS apps, you can get the Android apps, um, and you can download these and everything else. And I guess if you have other services as well, um, I think within their applications, you can select to have it specifically for the, using the WireGuard technology. So that's always good to see, and it's good to test out as well. Um, it's more straightforward and it's an improvement over both IPsec and OpenVPN um, then that's really good uh, to see and it's good to test out as well um, and good to see that Asus are actually including this now in their firmware as I said before they're upgrading the firmware quite constantly and adding all these new features. Going back to again just lastly is just to remember that the um, the clients can be assigned to a specific VPN. So it's the function that's similar to Fusion VPN. That is only for Wi-Fi 6 or AX, uh, Wi-Fi AX models, um, and also uh, supporting WireGuard server and client. Currently, that's only for AX models and features as well. So the firmware can be downloaded, and I'll give send you the link to the forum page where you can actually download it. Um, so again, this is just an early stage release candidate three, and currently the supported um, routers are the GTX 11000, the Zen Wi-Fi uh, XT8, the RTAX 88U, the RTAX 82U, and the RTAC 86U, and lastly the RTAC 68U. Um, so it's currently uh, just supporting those ones, but I believe that in the coming weeks they're going to release it uh, for further models as well uh, for you to have a look through and everything else. Um, and then they'll be releasing updates as, as we go along um, before it's released to the public as a, um, a basically a, a final version. So again, this is just a test version that you just need to be wary of. So I'll link again into the description. If you have any questions around this, then just let me know. And then in, in the description, I'll leave some information around WireGuard as well, and then the DNS over um, the TLS as well. So you can just read up yourself as well if you're interested. Okay, so this has just been a quick video just reviewing this new um, uh, beta version 
of the Asus uh, firmware. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Okay, thanks for watching and have a great day.